What's up guys? Today I'm gonna go over every single aftermarket part that I put on my car. I'm gonna go over it in the order that I put it on. I'm gonna let you know where I bought it from, how much I paid for it, and whether or not I thought it was worth it. But first I need to talk about something really serious. So I was driving my car this morning uh, and I had to park it downtown. I was kind of in a hurry while parking. Uh, and then this happened. It's a cold world. It's gonna take me years of therapy to get over the uh, emotional pain and trauma that I felt when I heard the wheel hit the curb and I heard that grinding sound and uh, i just want to warn you guys this can happen to you you never think it's going to happen to you but this can happen to you this can happen to somebody you know this can happen to somebody you care about so uh if you want to support me while i'm going through this very difficult emotional period of my life please hit the like button and subscribe Okay, I wasted enough time. Let's go over my parts list. So the first thing I bought was my AWE Touring Midpipe. Paid $637 for this from eBay. Uh, the reason I bought this was I thought the car was a little bit too quiet stock. And that's because the midpipe, the stock midpipe is resonated. So I bought the AWE one, which is non-resonated. It made the car about 10 to 15% louder. Uh, was it worth it though? Was it worth $637? Honestly, probably not. And the reason I say that is because I could have just gotten a resonator delete for a lot less money. Now maybe a resonator deleted 335 wouldn't sound as good as just getting the actual AWE mid pipe. I don't know, I'd have to hear the sound comparison in person. The next thing I got was the Dynan Cold Air Intake for $485 from eBay. I like the Dynan Intake because it was a uh, carbon fiber and that looked cool in the engine bay. But $485 is kind of a lot of money to spend for a basic 335i intake. And I think the uh, Dynan Intake was actually selling for even more money if I bought it directly from the Dynan website. So, uh, as much as I like the little carbon fiber bits in the engine bay, I don't think it was worth $485, especially considering the fact that I ended up selling the Dynan intake. I'm not even using it anymore. And the reason I did that is because it's closed box and I wanted an open box intake to get more intake noises in the cabin of the car. Next, I got the AWE Touring Muffler for $1,400 from AWE. Uh, the reason I bought this muffler was because even after adding the AWE mid pipe, it still wasn't loud enough. I wanted more volume. So I was running the M Sport muffler or M Performance muffler before I got the AWE Touring one. And that one sounded good, it just wasn't loud enough. So I ended up selling that, buying the AWE one. The reason I went with AWE is because I watched a ton of videos and I really like that deep tone that this exhaust produces. $1,400 is a lot to spend on a muffler though. This is by far the most expensive aftermarket part that I put on my car, but I still think it's worth it because I really like how it sounds. It's very high quality does not drone it's very quiet when you're just cruising or, or sitting at a traffic light but then when you floor it in sport mode it really opens up and uh, that's something you don't really get which is like a, a muffler delete or a very cheap muffler the cheap ones are usually loud all the time they can't go into quiet mode uh, the way this one does the next thing i got was the bms stage one tune i paid uh, 379 dollars for this from uh, the Burger Motorsports website. Now, when I bought this, I thought that I was only gonna be keeping the car for like another six months and then selling it. So I just wanted a quick, easy tune that didn't cost very much money and the BMS stage one was perfect for that. Now, after I got it, um, I changed my mind, decided I was gonna keep the car longer 
So I ended up only running this tune for like a month before switching to a flash tune. So uh, obviously since I only ran it for a month, it was not worth paying $379 for. Now uh, if anyone's interested, got the tune right here. Uh, I even paid an extra like 20 or $25 to get the waterproofing box. And that's included in here. If anyone wants to buy this, I will sell it to you for $150. I only ran it on my car for a month and you're gonna get it for less than half of the price of uh, if you buy it from the BMS website. So hit me up if you're interested. The next thing I got was the BMS intake for $229 from the Burger Motorsports website. Uh, like I said earlier, the dining one was closed box. Uh, I wanted open box intake, this one's open. Gives me a lot of cool uh, turbo noises. Only $229, it's pretty cheap. Sure, it's not carbon fiber and cool looking in the engine bay like the other one, but absolutely worth the money. I definitely recommend it if you have an N55. Okay, the next thing I did was Beamer Code. So I paid $30 for the Beamer Code app from the Apple App Store. This allowed me to customize a lot of things that you can't usually do in the iDrive menu. So I completely disabled the auto start stop feature, which I hate. I got rid of a, a lot of the like annoying warning messages you get on like the backup camera and the, the infotainment screen when you first turn the car on. And it lets you just customize a bunch of uh, coding related stuff. I definitely recommend it for every BMW owner. Next is the boot mode license along with OTS map bundle, which I paid $645 for from the keysmotorsports.com website. Uh, I love, love the boot mode tune. It's very smooth, adds a ton of power, doesn't sacrifice any comfort or drivability. Highly recommend looking into the boot mode tune. I had no issues with it at all. Okay, the next thing on the list, uh, not really an aftermarket part, but I'm gonna include it anyway. And that is the boot mode Wi-Fi agent. This little thing right here. So I paid $150 for this from the Pro Tuning Freaks website. And then after I got it, I realized that this is just uh, basically a Raspberry Pi 3. So I could have saved myself a lot of money by just buying a Raspberry Pi and uh, a memory card and installing the firmware on this myself instead of buying it from Pro Tuning Freaks for $150. On top of spending all that money, I was also never able to get it to connect to my Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone. And every time that I uh, flash my car, I just use my laptop. I just use this computer to do it. So at this point, the only thing that that Wi-Fi agent's really gonna help me with is data logging, because I don't want to data log with my laptop. But that being said, I think you might be able to use boot mode now with just your phone and the OBD adapter. I think they might have released an update where you don't need the agent anymore. I also got this cool little sticker when I bought boot mode. Okay, next, the VRSF aluminum charge pipe. I paid $211 for this from extremepowerhouse.com. Uh, if you do any amount of research on BMW N55 engine issues, one of the most common things that pops up is the charge pipe. So the stock charge pipe is plastic. And if you decide to tune the car, it's probably gonna crack on you. And, and some people have even reported it cracking on a stock tune. So I highly recommend you get an aluminum charge pipe upgrade so you don't have to worry about this issue anymore. Definitely worth $211. But one thing I will say is I actually drove the car uh, with the tune on for like a month or something like that with my stock charge pipe and never had any issues. But you probably shouldn't risk it because you don't want it blowing on you and throwing you into limp mode while you're on the highway far away from your house. Next part is the VRSF 5-inch intercooler, which I paid 
$342 for from uh, extremepowerhouse.com. Is the intercooler going to make your car faster? Well, no. But what it will do is on a very hot day or after you've been driving the car for a while, it's going to prevent you from losing a ton of power when the car kind of heat soaks. And it's going to do this by cooling the air that's being sent into your engine. Also the charge pipe, after I installed the charge pipe and intercooler, I did those two things together. I noticed I got some more cool intake noise out of it that's separate than what you get from the actual cold air intake. So uh, definitely worth $342 for the intercooler. Also boot mode recommends it if you're gonna be running a tune. Next is my Style 763M replica wheels, which I paid $930 for on eBay. One of the first videos I ever made on this channel was me explaining why I bought, decided to buy a new set of replica wheels instead of just replacing one damaged OEM wheel. You can go check that video out. But basically I really like how these wheels look and I've never had any issues with them. No, uh, nothing wrong with the finish, uh, no cracks, no bends, no nothing. They've been perfect. Obviously, if you saw the beginning part of the video, I did recently curb them, so I gotta be more careful with the uh, curbs and, and potholes and all that. But I haven't had any issues with these replica wheels. They aren't gonna be as strong as like OEM wheels or, or very expensive aftermarket wheels, so be really careful. Don't run your car into a curb really hard because you could end up just cracking them. But I do not regret buying the replica wheels so far. I haven't had any issues with them. $930 is a good price. They look cool, 19 inch. No regrets there. Some of you might disagree since they are replicas and not real, but whatever. The next thing I got was the aluminum strut bar, which I paid $268 for from the Keys Motorsports website. So my biggest complaint with the F30 is the steering. I think it's too light and too loose. And this strut bar, help tighten things up a little bit now it is the difference is subtle it's not like it's not going to turn your car into like the e90 hydraulic steering but it's subtle improves it a little bit i notice it at low speeds and at high speeds uh, when i put a video out on the strut bar i did get a comment there saying that it's not going to improve anything at all and in fact it's just gonna damage my car well, I've been running it for a while now and it hasn't damaged anything and I absolutely do notice a difference. It's not just in my head. Now you might try it out and decide that the difference it makes is not worth $268. But in my opinion it is, I like my strut bar. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, the pedal cover upgrade. Not much to talk about here. I paid $27 from Amazon for these pedal covers and they just make it look cooler than the stock pedal covers. Definitely worth the money. My camera died in the middle of recording it so here I am redoing parts of it. But anyway next uh, is the LED light strips. I paid $62 for this on Amazon and it basically just added ambient lighting to the interior. It looks cool. I like it at night. But $62 is kind of a lot to pay for these plastic little strips that you just plug into your doors. Uh, maybe you can find it cheaper somewhere. If not, uh, I don't blame you for not wanting to buy it, but I like it. I think it looks cool at night. And the very last thing is my VRSF high flow catted down pipe, which I paid $427 for from uh, Extreme Powerhouse. So uh, I didn't buy this because I wanted the car to be louder. The car was loud enough after I added the AWE muffler and Bumo tune, but to go stage two, they recommend that you get a higher flow downpipe. Could have gone Catless, but I think Catless would have made my car a little too loud. And also some people say it leaves a lot of uh, exhaust gas smell behind when you go Catless versus Catted. So I went ahead and bought this downpipe just so I could go stage two. Uh, it opened the exhaust up a little bit, made it louder, and uh, it also made it a little bit more raspy, which I kind of preferred the tone before where it was just nice and deep, but I don't know, a lot of people really like that. I, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Overall though, I'm glad I bought this. All right guys, 
here are the totals for every part that I bought. Let me know if you think that this was a reasonable price or if I totally got scammed. Keep in mind though, every part I bought for my car, I got brand new. There were no used parts. If you have a 335i that you wanna start building, but you look at this list and you think, man, that is way too much money to spend, don't worry, you can do it way more budget than I did. I spent a lot of money on unnecessary things, and that's because this was my first time ever doing a car build. This was my first attempt at it. I made a lot of mistakes and I learned a lot. Next time I do this, I'm gonna do a better job of it. Oh, and one more thing. So I bought the very first part in this list in the beginning of 2019, and I bought the very last part in this list towards the end of 2020. So I did not spend all this money in the course of like a few months. I spent all this money kind of spread out in a two year period. All right guys, that's it. That's the full parts list. Uh, check out my channel if you wanna see full videos on any of the parts that I mentioned in this video. But in case you are wondering, there's still a lot more things that I can do. Uh, the car is still at stock ride height, that nasty wheel gap. I could still lower it. I could get coilovers or something and then uh, Brake calipers look cool, but I would like some drilled and slotted rotors, so I can look into that. And in terms of performance, I can put in some ethanol and start running an E30 tune. I can also buy a meth injection kit. Uh, the 335i is a great car. There are so many performance and uh, aesthetic related modifications that you can do to it. Thank you for watching. Hit like if you haven't yet and subscribe. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna go back to crying about my messed up wheel.